Hey guys, Stony Creek here. Mark over at Bumblebee Junction has a baked bean musical fruit challenge. And he called me out on that. He wanted to know how we make our baked beans. Now I don't have one of those fancy smokers the way Bumblebee Junction does. We've got just one of these little charboil smokers right behind me. But it's going to do a fine job and I'm going to show you how we bake our beans. Now you all know me. I can't just show you how we're going to bake some beans. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of baked beans. Have you ever wondered what beans, jazz, and barbecue have in common? Well, stay tuned. You're going to find out. So before we get started on our barbecue baked beans, I want to tell a little bit about the origin of those beans. Now, sometimes facts can get lost in history. Sometimes that story changes with each telling. But I'm going to do my best to tell that story. In the early 16th century, Spain is on the move. Christopher Columbus is making some of his last journeys to the New World and brings back some innovative ideas. But more about that in a minute. Because of his exploration, that paved the way for more vessels to make that trek. And they brought back uh, different goods and foods back to the Old World. Now one of the things that they brought back was beans. Now history books say that about 1528 beans were first introduced to Europe and then they started cultivating them. The Europeans had discovered that beans store really well in a dry state, they're easy to prepare. So they ended up being a, a staple on a lot of the, the ships making that uh, new exploration transit. They also found that they were an inexpensive food item for their own population so beans became pretty uh, pretty common, pretty staple across the whole uh, European scene. So let's start preparing our beans. Start off with, we're going to get a half a pound of red kidney beans and also a half a pound of navy beans. gently mix these up. We're going to pour in the water and they're going to soak for three or four hours. Well we'll set these aside and we'll start the next step. Now one of the ways those beans have been prepared is actually attributed to the French with their cassoulet. Now although they used a white bean they started adding meats and different vegetables and tomato sauce and that's kind of the precursor of our baked beans of today. So now I'm going to chop up one onion, two green bell peppers, and one green chili pepper. So what do beans have to do with jazz and barbecue? 
Just cool your flame. I'm getting there. Remember old Chris Columbus? Well, that island that he found in the Caribbean, he called Hispanola. The first indigenous tribes Christopher Columbus encountered on the island he named Hispanola had developed a unique method for cooking meat over an indirect flame created using green wood to keep the food and wood from burning. The Spanish called this barbacoa, the original barbecue. Now this technique of cooking was brought to North America in the later 16th century uh, along the coast of Mississippi. This style of cooking was picked up by the Native Americans that were there and then the style uh, spread along until it reached our New England colonies. Now there's a lot of history to American barbecue and I'm not going to go into all of it but I do want to highlight the four main styles of barbecue that most of the derivatives do come from and then their migration across America. Carolina barbecue is considered the oldest. They use uh, primarily pork in their uh, barbecue. And then uh, the Memphis style of barbecue would have been next. Then due to the migration west, German immigrants uh, created the Texas style barbecue out in western Texas where they use uh, primarily beef in their barbecue. And then finally came Kansas City barbecue. And that's kind of a conglomeration of the other four styles. Now I'm going to take a little break here and I'm going to share something with you. When Mark called me out on this challenge, he had no idea that I grew up within an hour of Kansas City. So Kansas City barbecue is near and dear to the heart. Wouldn't you know I forgot to turn the recorder on. I had one cup of brisket. Now brisket, where did that come from? Let me show you that real quick. So now then what we want we want to get some of these burnt crispies off. We want a cup of that to add to our beans. We're gonna, that's that fat layer. We're going to put all that into our beans. I've got a one cup measuring cup I'm putting that into. And that, my friends, is how we do a brisket. Now, I can't be adding burnt ends, brisket fat, and case the original masterpiece barbecue sauce without telling you the origins of Kansas City barbecue. Now Henry Perry was born in Memphis, Tennessee and as a young man worked on river boats as a cook moving up and down the Mississippi River. And then when he was 33 in 1907, that's when he moved to Kansas City. Now Mr. Perry had some ambitions. Most barbecue historians would say that he started selling his meats out of a back alley in the garment district right around uh, 1908 or so. Now come uh, 1910, when he got his draft card for World War I, he listed himself as self-employed that had an eats shop, and then that was located in the Jazz District. His brick and mortar restaurant menus included both beef and pork, as well as mutton, and the game that we might write off as roadkill, including possums, raccoons, and groundhogs, all available with his sauce. And later that was described as harsh and peppery and it's not sweet at all but it did bring in some of those jazz musicians and before long word spread of Mr. Perry's eat shop all across America. I might add that these came out of my own garden while I'm doing sauteing this I added the, the meat first and then I added the vegetables this is on a low heat we're gonna stir this so nothing burns and we're gonna do this until the vegetables get soft they're not uh, super crunchy let's see what this looks like here's our one pound of strained beans and again they soak for right about four hours a little bit more we're gonna add six cups of water We're going to add one cup of apple cider vinegar. We're going to add one cup of KC Masterpiece Original Barbecue Sauce. This is one quarter cup of yellow mustard. Two tablespoons of cider vinegar. And we use one third cup of maple syrup. I'm 
Okay, let's stir this all in. Now let's go out and check and see if the smoker's ready. Now Henry Perry might have invented Kansas City barbecue, but he didn't invent the sauce. That's going to come next. Well, the smoker's at 250 degrees. Let's get these beans on here. Now to get that Dutch oven to fit in there, I had to take out those grates, but that's okay because all the fire's in the smoke box on this side. So we're gonna come back and check that here in about three hours. I'll check it off and on before that, make sure the fire's still good. Stir it every once in a while. But I'll bring you guys along with me once that's done. We're gonna take a look at them beans. Now unfortunately, Mr. Perry suffered a stroke in 1931, and that left him paralyzed uh, completely on his left side. Now sometime in the mid 30s, a man by the name of Charlie Bryant came up from Texas and he helped old uh, Mr. Perry out, became an employee of Mr. Perry. And shortly after he arrived, then Charlie's uh, brother Arthur Bryant came up for a visit and he just never left. Now in 1940, Mr. Perry uh, ended up in the hospital with pneumonia and there he uh, passed away about a month later. Now by this point he had uh, three restaurants, three brick and mortar buildings, and he left those to Charlie Bryant. Now Charlie Bryant, being the faithful employee that he was, he left everything the same way that, that Mr. Perry did. Cooked everything the same, that same uh, bitter sauce, and things were running pretty smoothly. Now in 1946, Arthur Bryant took over, and that's where some changes began. Arthur Bryant tinkered with Perry's sauce made a little bit sweeter, more like what you'd see in uh, Memphis or Carolinas, but he was also an entrepreneur. He liked to make money. So in the past when all those uh, burnt ends were given away like chips are today, he decided that he was going to capitalize on that, so he started putting those in the side dishes along with his baked beans and in those same baked beans is also his new Kansas City original sauce. So there's where we get Kansas City style barbecue baked beans. Well guys, it got too dark for me to film outside. Pull this off the grill, so I brought it back here in the kitchen. Let's pull this lid off and see what we've got. Oh boy. Let me zoom in on this. Seems right in the looms, isn't it? Can you see this? Nice chunks of brisket in here. We've got our chili peppers, green peppers. Hope you like the history of the Kansas City style baked beans. So part of this baked bean musical fruit challenge is to challenge some additional channels. And I've decided to challenge seven. Yep, that's right. There's seven of them that I would like to challenge for this. Rose over at Wholesome Roots, you've been challenged. Jay with Mid-South Flavor, you're from Arkansas, you've got a cooking channel, let's see your beans buddy. James at Harshman Hills, show us what you've got. My Canadian friend Tim at Troll Forge, show us how you're going to make your baked beans. Lady B, the hopeful homesteader, take us back to your kitchen, show us how you make baked beans. Morgan of Goldshaw Farm. Show us how do you make your baked beans up there in the Northeast. Rick at Old Camp Ranch. Oh, disclaimer. Show us your Western style baked beans, buddy. You've all been challenged. Show us your bean recipes. Now Mark over there at Bumblebee Junction has a playlist going with all of our entries. Be sure to let him know when you've got your videos up and he'll add it to his playlist. Now folks, some of these channels might not be familiar to you. Some of the channels I know that you've probably seen out and about before, but I'd encourage you all to at least uh, click the link, go check the channel out. If it's something that you like, you know, 
Please show them some love, subscribe to them, be sure to tell them that Stoney sent you. Hope you've enjoyed the connection between beans, jazz, and barbecue. Thanks for watching me prepare my baked beans today. And a big shout out to Mark over there at Bumblebee Junction. Buddy, I appreciate you including me in this challenge. And as always, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next video.